Now, if you want to go to the University of Oxford to study either physics, engineering, material science, or physics and philosophy, there is one admissions test that you absolutely have to take, and that is the physics admissions test, otherwise known as the PAT. Now, this is not an easy test to take and is sometimes a little bit unpredictable. Um, from year to year, the number of questions have changed. And it not only focuses on a physics syllabus, but it also focuses on your mathematical abilities as well. So you get tested on quite a lot of different possible topics in one two-hour paper. It has to be this way because the University of Oxford is such a competitive university. In fact, one of the best universities in the world to study physics. And in today's video, I'm going to go over my top five tips on how you can perform at your absolute best in the PAT and hopefully get that place at the University of Oxford. Now, my very first top tip is a little bit of a disclaimer. Make sure you actually need to take the PAT. There is a lot of work that goes into preparing for the PAT. I usually suggest that the students that I've had working towards this test that they start at the very latest at the beginning of the summer, just before their last year of high school. There is a lot of things that you can do in preparation for the PAT that does take up a lot of time. If you are interested in taking other courses or even other physics courses at other universities, at universities which you might prefer, you might want to use that time in the summer to maybe go and attend a summer school or get a little bit more work experience to boost up your UCAS application or your personal statement. If that is you, we at the Frofts can definitely help with that. Have a look at the link on screen right now, should you need help with your personal statement. But just to make sure that you absolutely are on the right track and you definitely know that you want to either do one of those four courses at Oxford, you should be ready to take or start getting ready for the PAT. Make sure that is your absolute number one priority from the start of the summer. Moving on to tip number two, I'm going to suggest to you guys that you really need to check the syllabus that is relevant for the PAT. As I said before, it's a difficult exam. There are lots of things that you can be tested on and provided that some people are doing A-levels, you might be doing IB, you might be doing something like the European Baccalaureate. Everyone is going to be coming into this exam from different levels of experience. What do we use as a baseline? Well, given that we know that this is typically given to people who have completed an AS level in physics and maths, and it's taken usually in October, I would propose that you actually are in a position where you can easily pass your AS level maths and AS level physics. Even if you're not necessarily taking those qualifications, take a look at these past papers, make sure that you can easily pass those tests, um, but if you want more specific information, Oxford have their own PAT course page where they very, very concretely put all the details for what are required in the exam, both on the physics and maths end. In terms of revision with this syllabus, you can then actually um, use the traffic light system. I mentioned that in a few other videos as well, but this is so useful when preparing for any kind of test, in my opinion. And what you will want to do is take that syllabus, you want to color code green if you're really, really confident on a, like, a particular area, or you can answer a question straight away in an exam without having to think about it. Amber, if you're a little bit unsure, maybe you can get it with a little bit of a reminder of a formula or an application of some sort. Or red if you have absolutely no idea. And based off what that color distribution is, you can then guide your own revision um, to the point where if you're doing this check with yourself every single week, ideally you should be getting greens across the board. At least that's what you're aiming for. Difficult to do if you don't have that syllabus in front of you. So make sure you actually go into the website and get it and make sure that you're able to pass before you get rid of this AS level maths and AS level physics past papers. We are now on to tip number three. And what I'm going to say with this one is make sure that you're using a wide range of sources in order to get your practice questions from. Of course, it's never a bad idea to have a look at past papers and have a look at the questions that are on there. 
but there are multiple sources of resources of questions that you can use to actually work on your critical thinking skills in the context of maths and physics. So there's a few very popular options I could already think of. The, uh, the British Physics Olympiad, especially the round one questions, are probably going to be the most pertinent to your preparation for the PAT. It does revolve around AS level physics material and a little bit beyond, so do take that test with a pinch of salt when you're getting ready for the PAT. However, given that the PAT has a combination of multiple choice questions and open-ended questions, it is incredibly good to look at things like the British Physics Olympiad in order to expand your mindset and expand your experience of applying equations you might already know from your time at school to things a little bit beyond the school curriculum. On the other hand, it's really important to look at the mathematical side of things too. So what I would heavily recommend is looking at past papers provided by the UKMT or the UK Mathematics Trust. They offer a variety of papers at different levels. So take again a little bit of care as to what papers you're using in preparation for the PAT. However, once again, you want to work on developing your critical thinking skills. Um, again, I also doubly stress that in preparation for this test, you might also want to look at a variety of textbooks and revision guides as well. One thing that I personally recommend from my own studies is CPG's AQA A-Level Physics textbook, which I think is a particularly good course to take in preparing for something like this, because it offers quite a lot of considerable content, not much more than other A-levels, but slightly more, um, given that it also offers um, additional optional modules that you can take in A2, where they've got some really good applications of what you worked on in AS. Now, that ability to be able to apply what you've done in the past to new unfamiliar situations is going to be absolutely crucial for your physics admissions test. So what you want to do is read through a variety of different books and papers, not necessarily all to do with the PAT, in order to expand your experiences and perceptions on how you interact with physics and mathematics. My next tip that I'm going to include in this list, which I am very tempted to include in any list when I talk about getting ready for a paper, is make sure that you take the PAT past papers under timed conditions. I mentioned that it's got quite a complex structure. I've also mentioned that there's a lot of content that you could be tested on. But the only way that you're truly going to know how you're going to tackle a paper like this is simply by giving it a go. But not just necessarily going through the questions in your own time under typed conditions like you would do on the day. Ideally, what you want to be aiming for is above 60% of the marks that you get across everything. The majority of students that take this test get between 40 and 60% of the marks. If you're getting under 40, you won't ha even really be considered for interview for Oxford. You want to be able to aim for 60% as a safety benchmark. Of course, grades differ year by year, but it's a really, really good initial target to go for. Don't necessarily beat yourself up if you don't get that the first time. Every time you do a past paper and you mark it, you learn very quickly what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. And it might not necessarily be to do with the content, it could be to do with how you pace yourself through this paper. It may end up being that you're really, really struggling with uh, questions on algebra or questions on kinematics. So you might end up, for instance, unless I'm take the paper, start with a, one of your stronger topics. For example, uh, AC circuits, for instance, or DC circuits, um, and then move on to the more difficult ones. But you can only really work on that strategy once you know how you feel being in that test. And the best way to do that is under time conditions with yourself marking them. So make you sure that you do that on a regular basis as soon as you can. And my final tip for how to best prepare for the physics admissions test is a really simple one. Get in touch with a tutor, work with them one on one. There is no better way to actually get ready for a test like this than by working with someone who's already passed this test themselves, 
got onto the course at Oxford that they were aiming for and literally knows these tests inside and out. At the profs, we are extremely um, gifted with the tutors that we have. Um, we have a lot of people that actually got into Oxford for physics um, and our work has actually proved to be incredibly beneficial for our students. In fact, 95% of our students achieved their first or second choice university and our Oxford success rate has been 55%, which is more than three times the national average. Uh, that is absolutely amazing. And if the statistics don't speak for themselves, I don't know what does. So without further ado, if you're in a position where you're having to take the PAC yourself, please get in contact with us via the details that you can find on screen right now. And in case we don't hear from you, best of luck with your application.